as an attorney when we lost last year in August, we were talking about key success factors for um, businesses in Nigeria. And since that time, well, let me also say that this experience sharing session is part of the way LBS seeks to ensure that participants get best practices. And that is the time you've been here with us, you have been, um, you have, well, opened the a $1 billion plant in Ibese. You're planning to commission at the second phase of Obadana, which is the biggest cement plant in West Africa so far. Um, I think that uh, we all know that Forbes recognizes you as the richest man in Africa and uh, one of the richest men in the world. And of course, there are several other numerous awards. Well, seeing that you've been able to achieve so much, we felt that we should hear from you about the magic of thinking big and key success factors in business. So, without saying much more, I'm going to ask Alaji to speak with us. So, let us speak. They will speak with us, and we'll have the opportunity to ask questions. And afterwards, we'll have a photo session where different guests can take pictures with him. And then we have a cocktail where everyone can also continue with the one-on-one -on -one interaction of Alaji. We hope to finish it by 12, 12, 30. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, you know, uh, I think we're one of the largest conglomerates in uh, Africa. Uh, it wasn't really an easy thing, you know, we went through help. Even now, we're still facing uh, issues, but, you know, we're doing better than a lot of people. Uh, we're highly diversified in terms of products, portfolio. Uh, why we did that, you know, because before we were mainly only in food and that's it, you know, but you know, business is like a cycle, especially you know, in a place like Nigeria where government uh, policies used to change uh, very often. Even now they do, you know, because there are two types of uh, entrepreneurs or business uh, men where uh, some of them they rely fully on government uh, support. Some of them, they rely on purely hard work. Uh, the ones that I call, uh, you know, don't that they fully rely on government support, you know, these are people that will always go to the government. And they, know, they normally don't get to Abuja until the middle of the night. <laughs> they get into the villa and then they you know, talk to them to give them an import waiver on what somebody is producing so that they don't pay duties, they don't pay taxes, and you know, they just make easy money. And they cause quite a lot of distortions in terms of, uh, you know, somebody who is struggling. I know the hardest part of business in Nigeria is that, especially our type of business, once we arrive somewhere, the whole community, even the extended community, they actually let government go of their responsibilities. You know, they hold on to us in terms of roads, in terms of power, in terms of water, education, uh, including, you know, empowerment, you know, making money and whatever. So, you know, that's why sometimes, you know, the money you have to spend that has nothing to do with the business quite a lot. And you have to really do your numbers right, otherwise you might end up, uh, you know, shortchanging yourself. And we focus on a lot of, uh, thank you, we focus on a lot of value-added uh, uh, this you know, where we want to use uh, local raw materials to turn them into something, you know, rather than Important, you know, because we believe we need to conserve the foreign exchange. Yes, today maybe we have 37 billion, but we look at that 7 billion in terms of uh, the population that we have in Nigeria and also our test for imported products. It's not really a big sum of money. You know, we've been to 68, we are now at uh, 34. And uh, you know, you see what we've been doing. Even when the going was good, we have already planned to totally almost become an export-oriented company 
by the year 2015. And uh, it is one of the things that, we, you know, you always have to think ahead. You know, in business, sometimes what is good today might not be good tomorrow. So you need to, you know, look at it. If you have the means, there's nothing really like diversification. You know, sometimes you do quite a lot of diversification, I mean diversification, and then you consolidate before you move forward. You cannot just keep expanding and expanding because sometimes when you over expand, it can cause a lot of uh, crisis also. So you need at least once in a while to consolidate and, uh, you know, go on. But, no, go back. But, you know, the, you can see already the vision of the company is to be a world-class uh, enterprise that is passionate about the living standard, the living standard of uh, the general populace and also high returns to uh, stakeholders. Our mission is to touch the lives of people by providing their basic uh, needs and then cooperate with customer service, entrepreneurship, excellence and leadership. In the early days, um, you know, when we started, you know, we started, uh, I started in 1978, and when I came back uh, from Cairo, I decided, okay, maybe I will just work a little bit, uh, you know, uh, with the family, and uh, decided that, okay, maybe the best thing to do, because normally in our own, uh, you know, family, they allow you to try, we try to encourage people to go on their own. And that's why really I don't think if I have uh, more than uh, two, two relatives, yeah, maybe uh, two, three, including directors that are coming from my family, both the, from my mother's side and my father's side. I don't think, including myself, we are not more than four or five of us in the whole group. We try as much as possible to encourage people to go on their own and try their own love. But that's really a normal Nigerian. A normal Nigerian doesn't really want to work for anybody. That's how it is. Everybody wants to go and try his own uh, love. So we started, <clears throat> I started first and I was getting an allocation of just three, four trucks of uh, cement to go and sell by day. And uh, I was given an opportunity to give 500,000 uh, naira, <coughs> you know, to uh, use it as a pipe. So I had small money. Uh, the 500,000 naira, yeah, it sounds small, but at that time I think it was big money. You know, because uh, in 1978 I was very really excited. The first, uh, the first car that I bought before even I started making good money in 1978 was Mercedes 200. And that Mercedes, what I paid was 5,100 naira. You know, air condition fully uh, loaded. But that time there was no power steering. You know, there was no power steering. But yeah, okay. There was actually no uh, So that was how, you know, I. Started. You know, I'll be skipping, but you know, you can read. And uh, during that time, you know, we concentrated on, uh, you know, general goods. Why general goods? Because, I mean, whatever that we lay our hands on in terms of import lessons. You know, there was import lessons before in Nigeria, mm -hmm. up, to, uh, 19, up to 1986, which was when General Kabungira came into power. He abolished the import license. But before the import license, uh, before it was abolished, you know, you cannot, as a business person, concentrate only on one product. Because you might not get that license. You know, but they will give you a license. The license is restricted. You cannot, uh, you know, and uh, yes, foreign exchange was available at a point. But then at the same time, uh, you have to go and bid for the foreign exchange and buy. So, a uh, majority of these licenses, you know, um, they were not given to the right people. So you need to go and get those, uh, uh, you know, people. But what we did at that time, so that we would not really be caught legally, you know, because uh, it, it wasn't transferable, we always encourage people. We would get our own, we also encourage people to make sure 
that uh, they have like an SVB, you know, just that particular company, they don't use it for anything, they go and apply for the license, once they are given, they will now to be a fresh company. So we don't take a company with liabilities, you know. So we'll take that company, we'll go and also open our own thing, you know. So up to the time, when they abolish the uh, import license, that is actually what helped us. And uh, it's not well. That was from that time we actually became number one in sugar, number one in rice, and uh, you know almost most of the commodities, baby food, frozen fish, were all number one at that time. But that was also a reason because majority of uh, the big business uh, moguls at that time, especially from the northern part. They were all uh, locked up by General Buhari. If you remember, you know, everybody was locked up. Uh, during Buhari, who are very lucky, I think was the only company that Buhari allowed us to go away with our rice. Because when Buhari took over, the uh, majority of us, you know, in Poti, we had almost 13 ships of rice. The day that he took over, you know, I think two or three days later, he declared that, look, Rice must be sold at 36 naira a bag, you know, and the price was about 60 at that time. But we were lucky actually, he did not take our own, he seized 12 ships, we ended up uh, getting you know, our own. And the money that uh, we made was quite a lot of uh, money, you know, because yes, we made extra, despite the, uh, six, uh, despite the 36 naira price, you know, we sold at 66 naira. And what we did was that, you know, somebody would have to pay us cash with no receipts for 30 naira. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, the uh, rest, you'll be, you know, you want, you pay the 30 naira in the house in two days. <laughs> and then, you know, you, you will, uh, you know, then you go and uh, pay the official price at uh, our office in the house. And that was, you know, quite a lot of money. It sounds small, that there was, that there was, you know, was, was, was really big. So we did that, we went through that. Uh, luckily for us, what we did, we actually reinvested, you know, most of the money into the business. You know, we are not really sharing money or we are not really extravagant in terms of lifestyle. And we tried as much as possible to keep most of what we are making in in that uh, business. So I think it was 1997, um, you know, we had a retreat uh, with uh, at Anderson at that time, you know, which is now KPMG. Um, the retreat, what we did was that, because, you know, during these years, up to 1995, there about, you know, we couldn't really turn around our money. We had actually so much cash we are just trying to see what we will do with money, really, at that time. Well, we don't really borrow money at all. We have never really borrowed. The first time we borrowed money was 2001. And uh, you know, at that time, what we tried to do was to say, okay, fine, how do we just turn around our money? I think that was the time we tried a lot of parties. We bought, I mean, we, uh, we got a license uh, for Liberty Margin Bank. And instead of the normal six million, uh, six million uh, uh, naira at the capital of the bank, we started that bank with 30 million. You know, because our dream was to see that we have the most, the biggest, and also the most powerful, the strongest bank in the country, Martin Bank. And uh, that also taught us a lesson, you know. And I keep uh, telling people that unless you are a banker. Don't go into banking <laughs> unless you are bank. You know, and it can, uh, especially you know, uh, somebody who is an entrepreneur with a very big business. It will be, it will be almost uh, suicidal if you try to go into banking. You know, I will tell you one thing. Uh, even if I get money, I'll tell you the story of why somebody shouldn't be in banking. You know, if you are a big conglomerate. Banking for a big conglomerate is really, really very, very bad. And uh, it can bring the whole group down. So you have to be very, very careful.
future. When you get there, if you see banking and you are an entrepreneur with a lot of business interest, then you get there, just uh, take off money. <laughs> So you know, with this, uh, you know, we, we incorporated uh, GIL, we transform, uh, you know, this, and we decided that okay, part of what became uh, paramount at that time was to see how do we actually utilize this cash that we had. You know, uh, what do we do? And I think we called uh, the chairman. I think he was the CEO of Nigerian breweries, then um, not pesters. Um, I think uh, the way he came and he told us that look, the opportunities are a lot in Nigeria, you have uh, not even scratched the surface, blah blah. You know. So we listened to him and uh, we called another guy, and I can't really remember, I was the chairman at that time, uh, Guinness, of course, Alabi at that time was MD. So rest in peace. He also came and uh, he we were really very, very scared at that time of industry. Because we tried uh, textile at that time. We went into textile in 1989 to have there And we really suffered mainly because of the massive, at that time, at the beginning, it was Indian, uh, you know, uh, attack. It was just coming from India that made us to, uh, you know, lose so much money. Then the Chinese also joined. And uh, it was a show the industry. If you remember, the textile industry used to be the second employer of labor in Nigeria. The total people working in the textile industry was, I think, over 260,000 people, which is almost now, really. Uh, our own at that time, I think we had in uh, Lagos around 4,700 plus, and in Kano 1,800, then we had the generis. But total, we had almost about uh, 6,400 something people, you know, and which we had to swallow the bullet and pay everybody off and shut down the business. Uh, it cost us heavy amount of money. Of course, uh, the one that we had in Lagos was one that we set up uh, in which was Nigeria Texas. Uh, so a lot of the workers that started was since 1960. Uh, you know, up to that for almost about 40 years, we had to pay and uh, pension gratuity, which the company did not really make any reserve for. You know, so it's another big lesson that uh, you know we went through. So we decided that was fine. Let's try the uh, manufacturing again. You know, going back in, into industry, and we look at most people. You know, like the Adebowales and who nobody really did well in industry. Because there is that problem of power, 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 power. You know, and without power, you can't do anything. So we decided that okay, we will still try. And uh, we look at the mistakes they made and uh, say, okay, how do we need to make these things uh, change? So we went into uh, industry and the decision was to be fine. Instead of going into this industry without knowing what we are not going to use watches or whatever, no, we will just do a backward integration, meaning that what we've been trading in, we should try and produce those things that we've been trading in, you know, and that was really what helped us. So we will take up the headache of marketing, of the product, marketing distribution, for this area that we know, we know how to import them, when we have the goods, we know how to market them, we know how to distribute them. So the only area we have to Right for this to know how to produce good quality products, you know, that can match with any, uh, you know, anywhere. So that is what we did. We started sugar, um, you know, salt. Uh, we had a very big uh, battle because when we started salt, it was one dominant company, you know, which was Dicom. Uh, Dicom, I'm sure you must have that Dicom salt. That concept was actually the golden of uh, uh, companies in Nigeria before. They, too, they never ever brought money, they had a lot of cash. And, uh, you know, it's okay. But then, how do we convince people not to do that? Even we, when we had the, the bank, I'm sure even myself, I went to that for maybe minimum seven, eight times to just try and have their accounts. And, uh, you know, it took us 
almost three years before they agreed to open an account, you know, for us. So it was a big company. But we went in there, and uh, within two years, we took over the entire market of uh, salt. And I think it was that time that people thought, I don't know, you know, dealing with us, you know, somebody has to be ready, you uh, we can be tough, or sometimes, you know, to say it might, you know, sometimes we say we are brutal. No, nothing like that. <laughs> but, you know, it was just a marketing something. Because we are not really used to making that kind of money. Because when we went into the market, I remember they were selling the salt at 360 Naira. And we thought, okay, well, 220 Naira is good enough. And we just said, okay, we will sell at 220. And that was really how we took the market. So we left, uh, you know, we did the bags even to, you know, pack our own boots while making our own bags. I will show you later on again. Yeah. Then uh, we move on from that time, after we put up all these things, you know, uh, by the beginning, which is the growth and the sustenance, uh, I mean growth, sustenance, and also the expansion. When we go to um, the cement, when we finish our timing of, you know, it was just a timing of which we wanted to do just about 300,000 tons per annum, most likely, maybe maximum 500,000. So we thought, okay, fact, the best thing that we'll do, there is no way in anywhere you can go and fight with Lafarge. Well, Lafarge, they are a world, uh, this, I mean, you know, they are quite big, really. You know, we didn't even want to think about it at all. And I uh, went to see the uh, MD. I uh, said, yes, it's possible to come to town. I went, I met with the uh, CEO of Africa when he came to Nigeria. Uh, look, why don't you come and take over this uh, factory? Give us 60%, you take 40% with man management so that you can consolidate your you know, account. Uh, we talked for almost about three months or so. They said, no, the condition is that they must take 51% majority and also uh, management. And then we will sign an agreement that will never do cement again. <laughs> you know, which we agreed to actually, but the only area where we had this agreement was that percentage. And, uh, you know, you can see how really God works out things, you know, and I said, well, let them agree, but I refuse to agree more than the 60% because we had almost about 13 projects at that time. And the 13 projects, you know, the banks were very small, so you had a limit of how much, you know, you could go and borrow from the banks. Uh, what actually stopped us from agreeing to the terms of Lafarge was because of uh, rumors. You know, Lagos looks big, or Nigeria looks big, but it can be small also because you know, within the cycle, we know all ourselves. And you know, at that time, some people had already started spreading the rumor that look, don't go, you know, especially you know our own commissions that look, don't go to, they are getting very tight on cash. So if we now go and sell majority shares, it means that yes, that story is correct. So we decided no, not. So we said, okay, well, Lafarge should go and try that. Look, we will also come to the market and try, you know, our. Look, I mean, there's really nothing to fear, you know, because we've reached the end of the world. And we we'll must try our best and see what we can try and, uh, you know, you know, and that's really how we, we uh, started. I think uh, by the third year, in terms of market share, we've already taken much, much uh, higher than, uh, you know, the budget. And then we went to uh, Benway. That was a bit between ourselves and Lafarge. Even that one did not really deter us at all. You know, we were not scared of their size. You know, because sometimes when you are small, you can be more efficient. You know, and really don't get scared of anything at all. Because in life, all what you have to look at, you'll be fine. That guy you are saying that he has done what? He's a human being like you. So why can't you also do it? You know, I mean. That's what it is. So we say, okay, what? The people that are running Lafarge, Lafarge is not a remote machine or whatever, you know. It's not, uh, you know, it's not something, they have done something and we too 
we can do it. It doesn't mean that blacks will be able to do so it. We went there, there was an open bid which was recorded actually, and we ended up uh, winning January uh, cement. But what we didn't know is actually the power of Lafarge to cause a lot of mischief at that time. You know, because what they did was just to create problems with the local community. And uh, the thing became very, very political. Uh, I think I went to the National Assembly uh, almost about eight or nine times about the fight in uh, Benue. We uh, declared that uh, go to even trucks are not allowed to go to Benue uh, State. So we had to stop all our business in Benin State because it was a big fight. And then the, uh, uh, we fought, to cut the story short, we fought between ourselves, the Benin State government, for 46 months. For 46 months we fought with them and we had to actually, we had to abandon Benin to go and start building Obadjana. It was when they saw Obadjana was 5 million tons. You know, then they gave up. But by the time that they gave up, in annoyance, they had already burned there are two lines in Benin. They had already burned down one line. You know, totally. You know, well, like it's just the main kiln that was, you know, burned. But they, you know, they did not. But we we'll love the issue. Today it is a different story. But, you know, that's also a very long part. And then uh, we had, uh, you know, they, we keep on expanding the African cash. Now what I keep saying, we are not, it's, even, it's even now that we are a bit generous in terms of giving dividends, but when we were private, um, we were not uh, giving any dividends any, well, at all. We don't give uh, dividends at all. We always invest our cash into the business, like uh, the only year which we gave a uh, dividend on Dogwood Industries, which is not a listed company, a parent company. And uh, we gave a uh, dividend of uh, two, uh, 280 million dollars, but that's 2009 dividend. So we still have not done the dividend of 2010, 2011. You know. So uh, we are always invested. Since when we started, we are not going to stop. So we kept on just going on. We put the business process and the structure to align with the business. Uh, vision of the group. Uh, what we keep doing uh, at that time was actually to keep calling and have just a very short uh, strategy session with maybe uh, sometimes KPMG, sometimes McKenzie. But I remember that time McKenzie did a short, uh, you know, uh, strategic uh, growth for the company for five years. And uh, I think we use it only for two years because we have already exceeded that uh, uh, target. You know, so we kept it by the side. We didn't really use it. And then the expansion, you know, continued in 2003, 2000, which we had a significant, uh, uh, you know, turnover at that time. You know, One point six at that time was uh, quite, uh, you know, a lot. But now we are nearly almost. Uh, Four billion dollars. Uh, 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 majority of what we are doing uh, was sort of to try and see that the individual businesses, all of them, will continue to grow them. And we are trying to also change the business from now going forward. Uh, because most of the business, like the sugar, you know, we spin the sugar, the flour, salt, and pasta division, you know, to their own subsidiaries, you know, which was only one subsidiaries of Dongote Group, and we listed them in the stock market. That was the first time that we went to the stock market. And we had a very successful uh, IPO. You know, very, it was very the book of capital market at that time. And we did very well commission the Obajana plant. One of the experience that, uh, you know, I got in terms of uh, Building a huge uh, industry in Nigeria is to do a level of infrastructure. You know, there was what you call uh, the grinding table, uh, the one that we use to grind the, uh, the uh, limestone. 
before we turn it into the product and then you start the process. It's worth about 180 tons and the size is huge. So when we brought it here, we could not even take it out of the port because the only option was for us to demolish the gate of the port, which would have become very controversial. That's one. Number two, there was no crane in Nigeria that uh, we need to be of course, we need a crane of uh, 200 and uh, 500 tons because it has to you know, stretch the food. And if it's that one, then you need three times the uh, cow you know, to be able to put it off. And we put it. And then we had to run a circle with a very long ministry of works to find out, okay, these are bridges in Lagos. Would they be able to handle 100? And no, not one. All the bridges will not be able to use because the weight is in one, you know, single location. Mm -hmm. So it's not spread. Mm -hmm. So the 180 tons, they said that no, they will not even allow us because all the bridges were not designed to carry 180 tons. And we're stuck. For what? We're stuck almost for about uh, 18, 18 months. <clears throat> but when you're stuck for 18 months, uh, it's not just you are stuck for 18 months, you know, the clock was ticking at that time. And I remember one time when I went to uh, this, uh, I went to one seminar, and people came out, they were complaining that, no, no, it's very difficult, you can never ever create a business with interest at 10%, it is impossible. But, you know, they were just making noise. So I thought, and when I was, when I started making my presentation, I said, well, you guys, you are lucky. When we established our business and we started uh, borrowing money, at the time when we were building over Jenna, I think we were being paid 42% interest rate. Yeah, we were paid 42% interest rate in uh, 2000, between 2004, 2005. Were paid, you know, because you remember the banks, even themselves, they are very small. They are tiny banks because the capital was two billion there. You know, so it's not that they had money. They too, they are struggling. You know, they are just small uh, banks. Even the capital market, the total capital market before the banking consolidation was just 1.6 or so trillion. It was after the banking consolidation that the market went as high as that 13 trillion. You know, but it was 1.6 trillion, it wasn't really that big. That was not really big money. So when we started uh, Oban Jana, we had a big, massive cost of our own for various reasons. Number one, there was no feasibility study on Oban Jana. We didn't do any feasibility study at all. And there was a reason for that. It's not that we were ignorant more. Because at that time we were a bit scared. We didn't trust anybody. Because we didn't want the news to get to La Parch or to get to anybody that were building a cement plant. We've seen how La Parch dealt with us by working us in uh, the <laughs> So the best thing for us is to lie low and pretend that we are not doing anything. You know, because uh, if we come out, they Cut us off. So we decided that we are not really going to tell any. So there was no feasibility at all. We just went that to be fine. If we are to build the, this, what do you do? Okay. But we had actually forgotten about the infrastructure. And the guys, FLS, who are the biggest in terms of uh, cement plants, they did not tell us exactly what and what we should do. You know, because they do what, what they wanted. It was just for them to sell that machine. And once we give them in a top credit, uh, that's it, you know. So we said, okay, fine. Uh, the estimate was 480 million. We didn't even calculate the uh, interest payments. You know, because when you are in an industry, it's different than doing trading. Because with industry, you will not reap any benefit. You will not take any that, not a penny. You will be able to take out of that business until you finish it. So you'll be pumping and pumping and pumping. It's the day that you start producing, and even the production has to be right before you start collecting money from the people. So that's the other aspect of industry. So but we went in and uh, we started uh, from uh, 480 
now the food is then 1.2 billion dollars. But uh, we are very big because we are faced with so many issues. First issue was the issue of uh, gas. There was no gas in the area, so we had to run a 90 kilometers gas pipeline, which we built also as part of the project. There was no power, and we had to build 135 megawatts of power because at that time, you know, so if you do all these things, we need this. And then uh, I spoke to President Obasanjo at that time, which he now directed uh, NEPA to buy the excess power. We wanted to generate excess power over 90 megawatts. So it is also, you know, it was. Uh, uh, our own thinking that we should generate that so that we'll be able to make additional income. So that's why we now invested 130, 135 megawatts plants, 345 megawatts each. Uh, we did that. Eventually, never didn't buy it from us. So it's one of the lessons of business. <laughs> so with that one now, what we did was to go to IMF. No, no, not uh, IFC. We went to IFC, they are okay, fine, please, we are looking for financing, blah, blah, blah. It took them some time. You know, IFC, they do more due diligence on the person than on the company. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even the last time, um, in uh, a month ago, when I met their CEO, uh, in, last, in uh, Alice Ababa, and now said, that well, last, I hope you have changed you are thinking, yeah, you know, the way that you do business in Africa. Because in Africa, if you take somebody's proposal, you will sit on it for six months, that business will become stale. He doesn't need that business anymore after six months. You know, because things do move around very fast. He said, no, no, they have changed now. They do things differently, you know. And even they will look out for uh, ADB, you know. He was saying, that, but why are we not dealing with ADB? I said that no, we are not dealing with ATP. Not that we catch anybody there, but it's just that at the time we needed ATP, ATP disappointed us. You know, and why? Because we went there, we are looking for entrepreneurs, we want you to support us, uh, we want to do this and that, you know, and really we became like a lightning stock. You know, yeah, if you say, well, do you guys know what is cement? Yes, we do now. I mean, I don't go. Like, yeah, I don't go to the meeting. Uh, but our CEO, Kule Alake, from Somalia, is very important for our and Uzo, who was our corporate finance uh, director. They went there, they made a presentation. So they came out with seven years, uh, you know, uh, 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 term, moratorium of two years, and then repayment of five years. And uh, we say, okay, fine, we agreed, uh, you know, with that. But they are also very smart. Uh, we were also a bit desperate to collect the money to finance ourselves because we didn't expect the, uh, you know, the plan to cost that much, you know, and we were a bit tight of cash. So we needed it, but they put something right there that, okay, fine. If we are going to expand any time, all the lenders have to sign up and allow us to you know, to give us a way back to expand. The issue is that they don't want us to expand at all, you know, for that period of seven years. So we said, okay, well, we took the money. <coughs> uh, we took the money. The Nigerian banks contributed about, uh, just about 180 uh, million, 179 million. And then we got 300 million. Also, we took 479 million dollars. That was the first uh, loan that we arranged with IFC, you know, which was also good. It gave us a very good uh, mileage, a good uh, record also. And we pushed through. We got the money from them, which really became uh, a good relief, uh, you know. And then we started expanding also, uh, you know, Benny. We were expanding Benny, but slowly. But now we went very fast to see how we can turn Benue into a bigger company. The intention was actually to prove to Benue people and also to Nigerians that yes, even Nigerian can also do the same thing. You know, because the what they use against us at that 
time that we didn't have a technical partner. You know, in Nigeria, it's a very, it's a crazy, uh, 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 you know, it is a crazy, you know, uh, system. Even today, as a Nigerian, you now go and bid for power plant. Somebody will not turn around and say, okay, who is your technical partner? I mean, like us now, we bid it for Shiroro and Greg, and uh, one crazy guy in uh, BP was asking that, you know, who are your technical partners, you know? And my guy really replied in that, well, you know, the businesses that we are doing now, do you see any technical <laughs> 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 You know, so, but that is what it is, really. You know, that is what it is. And I'm sure if you go forward, you know, um, most of the government, they will stop, you know, I have nothing But you see, foreign investment does not really go anywhere where there's no local investment. Because the local investment that will be able to drag the foreign investment is because foreigners are not fools. They have put their fingers here and there, you know, for you know, God knows how long. And uh, unless they see a, a, a local investment, they will not come at all. It doesn't matter how good it is. Because they will believe that there is something that is wrong, which they cannot see. But you, as a local person, you know the terrain very well. So they won't come in at all. So with that, you know, that was the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, issue. Anyway, we took the money, and uh, our own financial model was actually what worked. You know, despite all these challenges, you know, because in you know, we had to build an airport. And the place is in the middle of nowhere, so we have to also build an airport, which is helping us today. Because without that airport, uh, we couldn't really rely on the government. Because we have signed agreement also, you know, it is also for your own reason to know. Yes, when you sign an agreement, sometimes if it's government, they might not do it. And if they don't do it, that's nothing they can do. Uh, you know, today, the role that the government is supposed to build, uh, you know, uh, from the Obatena cover ejection to the factory up to cover runabout, they only did about 18 kilometers. And the 18 kilometers that they did, now there is about 42 and a half kilometers to be done, which you wrote to them eight months ago that please allow us to go and do this for free of charge. We don't want your money anymore. But even that one have not received the approval. <laughs> so that's also one of the toughest, uh, you know, this is. it's not really easy. And sometimes people think that, yes, you sit down and, uh, you know, we're just minting money. No, yes, we're making money, but it was a lot of difficulty. <clears throat> so what happened was that now after collecting the money, then we were a bit relaxed, and that is when we were able to go through that agreement again. And uh, we thought, okay, you know, these are the first people, and uh, these are our so they've gone to corner us somewhere. Because when somebody is saying that you cannot expand your business until you have a written waiver from 13 lenders, which is difficult, you know, and all the 13 lenders, they have to agree. So if they don't agree, which means we will not be able to. So that's why we say, okay, well, let's see what we will do. And they know, in based on their calculation, we will not be able to pay that money for some years, which means we are trapped. It means that there won't be any expansion. At least they've been able to box us into the corner and keep us in Nigeria so that we will not go to anyone. So okay, fine. And likely, the business now turned out to be much better than what we even thought. And uh, in uh, 18 months, we now call it with a deficit, it's every issue that for a meeting. So they came at we met in uh, Paris uh, at our lawyer's uh, office, Alan and Ori, and we said, well, gentlemen, uh, we want to just thank you. We want to thank you. We want to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the loan that you gave us, you know, it has actually helped quite a lot, but we want to give you notice 
because I have to give ninety days notice. I want to give you notice of uh, uh, ninety days, and uh, we will be paying you. Uh, what? Yes, we will be paying you. <laughs> And we did, we paid them the 479 uh, million pounds, but that almost will open high school a lot of because they didn't do something. See, normally in bank, when you go, you want to borrow, when you want to prepare before the time, especially abroad, they will tell you that they have already put that transaction. So, what, you know, for example, when we went to send the charge, and what they did was say, yes, when you are paying that penalty, the penalty is that they will make that money off from you. If you like, you can pay it, you know, but those charges, they will take them off front. So if you like, you can pay off, you know. But that one, there was nothing like that. So we went scot free. We right. paid them the money. And then that's how. That is how we actually started, uh, you know, expanding. And you know, it, it, it really it helped us quite a lot. See, because with that, uh, a, a small thing that they put, just one line, it will uh, actually stop us from even being, you know, uh, would have actually stayed within, you know, because the money was supposed to, we were supposed to finish paying that money in, in 2012. And then, no, yeah, now, you know, the 479 was supposed to finish paying by now. It means that you know, would have actually stayed at that five million tons period. You know, but that was the argument. So we will go uh, let's have to show you where we are now. So the two thousand and seven, you know, is the diversification expansion. And also like what I keep saying, the more we expand, after a while we'll stop and consolidate again, you know, because we are expanding uh, no, it is difficult for us to do all at the same time, to expand the business, to expand the human capital. Uh, the things that which we have to do now, you know, because finding engineers, it is one of the toughest things for us to do. You know, experienced uh, experience, uh, engineers. What we have done now is actually to open Dambote Academy, you know, uh, it's under construction now. But the students, you know, started since uh, last year, and uh, I will show you when we get there also. So now the diversification is to now look at what we do. You know, what we are trying to do now is actually to fully transform the company into an export base. Because if I go there and just tell you we are doing this, we are doing that, you will not really understand. We made our money through food businesses different types, and going forward now, we have uh, cement, because if you look at it, cement is the only business that we've taken outside uh, Nigeria, because the one that, you know, is quite big, and not only that it's big, you know, it's not, it's not really easy to build a cement, uh, you know, factory, it costs a lot of money, you know. And it's not only a lot of money, you know, we look at the, the areas where we believe we have a greater advantage. The greater advantage that we have is that of cash that, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know we have. And uh, in 2008, if you remember, there was a banking, uh, you know, crisis. And it doesn't matter where you are, anywhere where you are in the world, they said that uh, cash is king, yes. uh, without a uh, good amount of money. You know, because anything can happen. I mean, you can see what is happening today in Europe. So people who have cash will make more money despite the crisis in Europe. It's not only Europe, even in America, you know, you've seen, I don't know whether some of you invest in Michael, you follow the Michael, please. And you can see that almost everything came down in the last three days, and yesterday was actually uh, worse, uh, you know, because these are things that I believe that whether you have investment or not, uh, it is also part of what you guys need to keep following, you know, because <clears throat> before I used to, about 12, 15 years ago, I used to only concentrate 
on what was happening in Nigeria. Only. But that's not it. You see, because when you go and you meet your colleagues abroad, they will be talking to you about what is happening in China. Even though you don't have anything to do with China. But, you know, you can't just say yes, you don't know, you cannot just think about it. You have to continue. So, you have to have a, a, a broad, yes, you know, you have to have a broad uh, knowledge of what's going on. I mean, for example, uh, uh, yes, was it yesterday, yes, yesterday I had to rush back from Minas to and, uh, you know, give a dinner to Sarah. Uh, Brown's uh, wife, and you know, um, uh, you know, she came to and she was passing by to go back, and uh, you know, the husband said that she tried to uh, you know, see. And what we talked about was totally different outside. By uh, you know, was uh, about climate change. <laughs> But you know, those guys really are uh, doing extremely uh, uh, well, you know, because they care. They are passionate about helping the needy, you know, much, much even better uh, than us. I think Fini uh, people are not really used to giving out much, you know, uh, Indians, Chinese, and Africans, you know. Um, but what they have done now is actually to Pops now they are having a retreat of 400 uh, highest billionaires, which they invited us. I mean, I'm part of what they, you know, they invited us to show the Kong were having a key in Washington for two days to tell us why we should be giving more money to the union, which is good. You know, it's a very good subject uh, you know, to do because the union wants to, they need to take care of them. So, with that, you know, you need to really follow what is happening. And uh, the diversification will help us. Today, yes, it's true, maybe we don't need to export anything. But what we are trying to do is to make sure that, uh, you know, before actually we used to be the highest in terms of uh, consumption of foreign exchange. We are fought with central bank over and over. What are we doing with money? We want to look at what you are doing. Why are you not too much money? I said, because our business is big. You see, the problem with us is that everything we now put under the Mbote, the Mbote, the Mbote. So when they add the numbers, if we are using KY Limited or whatever, they won't even know who was buying. Unless they look at uh, you know the registration of the director chief. So it took a long time before central, especially when we were building over dinner. One time I had to go and take, uh, I had to go and take the, all the deputy governors to come to Obadjana and see what we are doing. You know, because of the amount of money we are actually buying in terms of uh, foreign exchange. But what we are trying to do now is trying to make sure that we become the biggest foreign exchange earning company in Nigeria. And that's why we are building fertilizer, even the cement. Let's start with the cement itself. When you look at the way that we are doing our cement, the target is for us to minimum, minimum, if we do badly, we should export 5 million tons from Nigeria outside. <coughs> uh, the 5 million tons will come, will even more. Because right now, the one we commission, which is the basic, some of you I'm sure you've been there before, we have, well, we have already started building the same one by the side, which is the, uh, to take it to 12 million tons. The greatest advantage that we have with that is that, you know, we are only 28 kilometers away from the border, the Republic of Benin. From Republic of Benin, you go to Togo, Togo to Ghana. From our plant there to our plant in Ghana is about 410 kilometers. <clears throat> so which means it's nearer than going to Obadjana or Abuja. Because from my plant to Abuja is over 600 kilometers. And Ghana doesn't have limestone. 
The one in Togo is not much. And even if it's there, you know, they have only one small factory. But from uh, Benin Republic up to this garden, within the 410 kilometers, there is uh, import of cement totaling about seven and a half million tons. That's one. So we will take advantage of what we will take advantage of the common market, which means it is zero duty, which will go into uh, you know, uh, all these countries. Number two, apart from the zero duty, uh, you know, there are what we call export uh, expansion grants, you know, which is uh, for export. Government should pay about 30%. But honestly, tell you the truth, as a business man, I am not even calculating that you continue to pay because things can change. Right now, we are saying that yes, if I'm going to earn 30 percent of whatever it's for, it's based on CIF, cost insurance and freight. They pay you 30 percent. Maybe when you submit a bill of one billion dollars, somebody will say, "I know this too much. They won't be able. They can stop." So they can change the policy. But we are not really following even that. But if they do, then it's good. So, yeah.